Hi everybody. This is certainly not called Three Easy Steps to Lesson Planning, but I hope to give you an idea of how to start. If you're interested in some concrete sequential formats, First Steps in Music and Kadai Levels is definitely the way to go. I'm going to offer a more eclectic approach, and I wish I could tell you exactly how to do it, but we all have such different programs, such different schedules. Some of us meet once a week, twice a week, 30 minutes, 45 minutes, 60 minutes. Our total time with the kids throughout the year is very different. But the common things with all of us would be how to start the body and the end of the lesson, and then how to take it from week to week. And that's what I'm gonna talk about today. I know lots of teachers have opening routines and bell ringers. Some have an opening song and it's a beautiful thing. It becomes the routine and routines are so important. It's especially effective in grades K through two. Singing for the older kids isn't always well received. So a better idea for the older kids would be to have a song or an opening activity where everybody joins in. I tried opening songs and it just wasn't for me. It was vocally and physically exhausting. Part of it was I taught at a K-8 school, so I taught a lot of different classes. Instead, I alternated two different activities for my opening. One called Body Shapes, which I created years ago. Body Shapes was playing on the screen as they entered and they would follow along with moving their bodies to the music. It was a great focus activity. I started at the beginning of the year and used it throughout the year. My other opening was a slide deck where we sang and signed a major scale and a minor scale, do based and la based scale. I did this with grades three through five. Grades one and two did just a major scale and grade two picked up the la based scale in October for Halloween. A lot of teachers use a rhythm pattern as a bell ringer and that works for a lot of people where the kids come in and they have a rhythm pattern on the board, some music and they perform that uh, to start the first minute or two of class. I did not have a prescribed closing routine. I taught right up to the last minute or so of class with whatever the body of my learning was. And so my closing was more, make sure you're in your assigned seat, quiet, and then we had a lineup routine so that they would be quiet and focused on their way out for the teacher. Some teachers do have a closing routine or um, exit tickets, other things, looking at their ICANN statements. Uh, some schools require a closing uh, situation like that. So you have to do whatever goes with your philosophy and your school's philosophy. Okay, now on to the body of the lesson. The body of the lesson is going to look different with the younger kids compared to the older kids. You might group them though and say it's going to look similar in K1, 2, 3, and 4, 5. And 2, 3, 4, 5 is going to look more similar. K1 is really, K1 is really going to be different. My idea for K1 was to have alternating types of activities. So one where there was movement and one where there was more sit down learning. And I alternated back and forth. A lot of short activities for them. It could be singing, movement, finger play, dance, singing game, book, singing game, and something like that. If you have kindergarten and first grade for more than 30 minutes, and I know some of you have it for 40, 45, and even 60 minutes, you have to be very intentional about how you choose the activities in that class time period. Okay, I'm almost done talking, but this is the last little bit before I show you how I would lay this out into a template over a period of time. Let's talk about the body of the lesson. I have a book that meant so much to me when I first got it, and this is it. It's Artful, Playful, Mindful by Jane Frazee. And when I read it, it was just exactly my philosophy, and it spoke to me so much because I have book after book after book of curriculum, uh, scope and sequences, textbooks with gobs of information that you could never do in a single year. And so you look at it and you think, w you just kind of give up after a while. You don't know what to do because it's too much information. And so I'm, I got this book and I'm reading along and it says, the model proposed in this book offers a concise three-part plan to introduce music components with only five rhythm and five pitch elements. 
It's given in a series of three classes, making music, making up music, and making sense of music. As a result, the typical burden of gathering fresh material for say 30 class periods a year is reduced to only 10. She kind of is acknowledging the burden of information that we have to process, but also this method I think is a much deeper way of learning for kids. She goes on to say, the issue of why the students played the xylophone or sang a new song was easily overshadowed by the delight of participating in a joyous multimedia approach to music. Students learned the skills of singing, speaking, playing, and dancing, but they were not necessarily made aware of the elements of music on which these activities depended. So a lot of teachers get caught in maybe not knowing what to do, and so they sing a song or play a game, and then the kids come back and they do the same thing, the same thing over and over again. Kids are bored, kids aren't learning, there's no deeper understanding, and so this is a way for you to look at it. And basically, it's being artful, playful, mindful, which is sort of similar to a Kodai approach of prepare, present, and practice. But artful is making music. You're singing, you're adding instruments with it, you're stepping, you're moving, body percussion. You're making beautiful music. And then being playful is doing something with it, playing around with it, creating, improvising, uh, creating new lyrics, creating new ostinati, uh, similar things like that. And then mindful is, um, it's it, you could think of it sort of as an assessment, but they're actually working with the, the, the elements. So let's say that you're in a pitch uh, little mini unit with Mi Re Do, and so the song you've sung has Mi Re Do in it. And so here's what you might do. Get, get in groups of three and say, take, let's say it's a rhyme. Take the rhyme and create a melody. So you guys get C, D, E and give these three F, G, A. Then they, they create a melody. So they're using the information from that song, but they're deepening their understanding of Mi Re and Do and they're being creative, working together collaboratively. That's what being playful and mindful is, is leading to. This is a kindergarten and grade one template with seven activities for each lesson. Tables can be easily made and worked with in Word or Google Docs. The A and B columns create a place for me to check off completed activities. I guarantee you'll forget from class to class if you don't get to something. I met these classes two times per week for 30 to 40 minutes. I work with four to six lessons at a time, which gives you continuity and a visual way to look at extended and extending learning for that artful, playful, mindful idea. The seven activities keep things moving between more and less physical learning to keep the interest of the littles. I might actually switch five and six depending on how the lesson is going. Let's start filling it in. I'll start with body shapes in lesson one, two, three, and four. Lesson five and six will have something special that I'll show you in a minute. Activity two, Echo Songs begins with introducing No More Pie in lesson one, singing again in lesson two, then having a student leader in lesson three. You can also split the room in half, letting one side be the leader and the other side being the echo. Repeat this idea in lessons four through six with Down by the Bay. Activity three, Vocal Exploration. We'll use the four voices with a story in lesson one. I created a resource called Zaxter the Alien, which lets kids be a part of teaching Zaxter how to use their four voices. In lesson two, it's just echoing the teacher. And then in lesson three, it's posed as a question. So that would sound like, what voice is this voice? To which they would say, your singing voice. What voice is this voice? And they would say talking or speaking, so on and so forth. And then in lesson four, they can try it with a partner where they can play teacher-student. One is the teacher asking the question and the other is the student answering, or they can do just echoing. Lessons four and five will have the teacher drawing and singing shapes, letters, and numbers in the air with a giant pencil. I got this giant pencil at uh, Dollar Tree. 
students guess what the teacher is drawing and echo the sound. So a Z would be do, do, do. All right, activity four is movement related to music elements such as dynamics, tempo, beat, and pitch. Lesson one is recorded music changes with just hand movements. Lesson two, we add locomotion. Lesson three, locomotion again. Lesson four has partners working together. One could be, um, one could move just on the fast part and the other just on the slow part, for example, and they could work it out how they want to do it. Then that music that has become so familiar to them can become the opening song, which you see in lesson five and six. They'll come in, you'll immediately play the music. You won't have to give any direction because they've already done the locomotion and they will just immediately go to what they're used to doing. All right, activity five is beat and rhythm and I'm using Rig a Jig Jig in three lessons and then switching to a recorded piece for students to move to for four through six. All right, activity six is a song I'm using. She'll be coming around the mountain. Lesson one, I sing the song as I read the book. Lesson two and three, we add the hand motions. And lesson four is singing along to a video. Lessons five and six introduce the new song and book and consequently the same sort of activities with Hush Little Baby. Finally, we end with a game, Charlie Over the Ocean for lessons one through three and Snail Snail for lessons four through six. Now here's a look at the entire plans for six weeks and with red areas marking new learning. Keeping, keeping a mix of known with the unknown is more grounding than introducing lots of new songs and games all on the same day. Here is a pitch and rhythm template for a year's learning in fourth grade. Everyone's may look different depending on what you want your kids to learn. Instead of adding activities like I did for the younger students, I'll highlight how these were put together related to the opening routines and body of learning using making music, making up music, and making sense of music. The table I created for older classrooms uses just one lesson at a glance instead of two because I usually needed more room to write. We are in a rhythm unit here learning about syncopa using the song Big Bunch of Roses and you can see three class periods for making music. Start out by writing up your entire plan for your focus song, in this case Big Bunch of Roses. Then you can break the plan up and teach over several class periods. Here you can see what I wrote for making music, making up music, and making sense of music. Let's get started. The opening is body shapes, then a name roll call. Students are seated in a circle and I sing, soul me, roll call class. And the first person sings their name, then the next. We make it a game to see how quickly we can go around the circle. It's really a quick singing check for me and a name check as I learn names. The opening ends with singing around the school song, national anthem, or whatever I want them to have a quick practice on at the time. Then we get to the body of the lesson with Big Bunch of Roses, with lesson one, learning it and adding movement, lesson two, using rhythm and form, and lesson three, reading rhythms. Then we move on to making up music. This is one lesson and uses a rhythm opening which involves me putting the syncopa into the echo clapping and body percussion. The making up music involves creating new titles and lyrics in small groups then performing in rondo form. Red writing was my review evaluation of the lesson. Making sense of music was four lessons, sort of. I was introducing recorder playing with treble clef note naming and some preliminaries related to articulation and the history of the recorder. So. Same opening routines, prepping recorder and then making sense of syncopa with dictation, writing copying patterns, then choosing multiple choice answers, and finally, reading rhythms with some tempo changes and Italian terms. I would apply the exact same process to pitch using the making music, making up music, and making sense of music idea. The idea is to take learning through several lessons to build on learning, adding continuity, and using lots of scaffolding with this process, which it naturally leads you to. I've created a simplified pitch and rhythm template with a 12 song bundle of songs. Each grade K through five has two multi-lesson songs to get you started in your year of planning. The link is in the description below.